Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Sarah Bassan is training us on how to scale our businesses with high converting videos. I always uh, ask the speaker, the trainer, to answer a couple of questions so that we can get to know them a little bit better at a personal level. Sarah, your first question, it's not very skill testing, is how, did, how on earth did you get into working with entrepreneurs and business owners given your background in psychotherapy? Uh, well, I'm so happy to be here with you all. And I'm happy to share that story because I got into this entrepreneurial world through an NLP training. So I have been working as a psychotherapist and as a supervisor at both in nonprofits and also for um, the county clinic. I absolutely love working with children and families, um, supporting them as a therapist and as a supervisor. And I went to a neuro-linguistic programming training where I thought, I just like to learn new techniques. I always like to grow and learn things that will help people shift quickly. That's, that's the type of therapist I am. I like to see people really, really transform. And so as I was there, I realized that there was this whole coaching world that I had no idea was out there. And so I ended up going through the certification program and starting my own business as a coach. And as I was learning and growing in various programs, I was surrounded by entrepreneurs. And the more I got to know them, the more I realized that what I know as a therapist and the experience, the skills, the techniques that I am very, very um, you know, practiced in is something that entrepreneurs need. Because to be an entrepreneur, you have to be out of your comfort zone most of the time. And you have to be on all of the time. And as human beings, regardless of whether you're an entrepreneur or not, we have things like self-doubt and you know negative thoughts and things that come up for us as we're just going through life with the ups and downs of business. Um, and so that's how I started working with entrepreneurs. I, I also believe, this is my mission statement, that entrepreneurs are going to change the world because they are problem solvers. And so it is my greatest honor to support entrepreneurs in their growth as human beings as they grow their business so that ultimately all of us, we all here, will change the world through our solving problems for other people and for the world. That's it. Perfect. Now your second filled question is, again, to kind of solve a riddle. Uh, not only are you a psychotherapist, but you're also ex an executive coach. And here you are training us on video marketing. Please help us understand this apparent paradox. Yes. So I, my first actual career was as a performer. I was a singer. I started at the age of 19 and became a professional singer and traveled the globe uh, singing on stages and for people. And so there's kind of where my first connection is with, with performance because I really consider being on camera a mode of performance. And so when I, uh, so really when the pandemic happened and I found that we were all of us on these, in front of the camera all the time, every day, all day long. And I was talking with my clients, entrepreneur folks. I was in circles uh, of going to, you know, various networking events like this one and talking with folks just like you. I found that more and more people were saying that they actually are uncomfortable on camera and that they know they need to do videos as especially in the world now, it will never go back right now that we've, we've ventured into this Zoomiverse as I call it. We, we have to be comfortable on camera and video also is becoming more and more essential for marketing of your business. And so when I recognized that folks were struggling with that, I also knew that I had the training and experience to help them overcome their fear of being on camera and not only overcome the fear,
Uh, Sarah, Sa please unmute. I accidentally muted you. <laughs> no worries. What did you say two sentences ago? <laughs> so the last part was about the fact that, you know, videos are the way of the future for marketing. And in this new world that we are on online, people want to know you. And the best way for them to get to know you is for you to create videos. Either it could be ads, it could be on your social media, it could be on your website. And so to be able to present powerfully and become a charismatic leader that all entrepreneurs need to be, video is the way. And, and so I started working with folks. I launched a course called Courage to Shine and I have a cohort starting in January. And it's been just an incredibly beautiful process to watch folks just like you all to be becoming empowered and comfortable and creating videos that will invite their audience to say yes and to follow them. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, participants, all 38 of us, uh, if you have any questions, would you please type them into the chat and I'll pose them to uh, Sarah at uh, intervals uh, during her talk. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk, uh, maybe before bedtime tonight and maybe tomorrow morning first thing, but I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the, the very act of taking notes will increase what you can absorb uh, by as much as 30%. Uh, Sarah, are you ready to rock the stage and wow us? I am ready. There, the stage is all yours. Take it away. So how many of you right now have been wanting to do video? You could just raise your hand, although I can't see everybody. But just to get a sense of the audience, how many have been wanting to do video that haven't started yet? We've got a few hands. How many have been doing videos already, but haven't really felt like they've got the conversion that they that they want. So we've got a few there. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Good to sense where people are at. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. And, and I know I answered one of the questions, but when I was three years old, I went to my first day of preschool and the teacher said, good morning, Sarah. And I said, nothing for a whole year, nothing. In fact, they even asked my parents if I could talk. I was incredibly shy, so shy that I would cry in front of the class in elementary school if I had to be in front of a, uh, a group of people. So I wanna share that with you because that's where I come from. That's how really, really hard it was for me and what I had to overcome. And as I was growing up, the youngest of seven, it was very chaotic in my home. So I had learned to stay quiet in order to stay safe. And each one of you has your story of why it is that you may be holding, your back, holding yourself back one way or another in your business. We all have things that hold us back. And what I wanna make sure today is that each and every one of you has the tools that you need to show up powerfully on video so that you can attract the clients, the customers that you need, and that you can become the empowered leader that you need to be to grow your business. Because ultimately, I believe that leadership is the basis, is the foundation of all business success. You have to be the leader. And when I say that, it, it is about inspiring the hearts of your audience. It's touching their hearts and inspiring them to follow you. And this is apropos for video, if you think about it, right? If you're going on social media, what do you want? You want followers. You want people who will click that link when you ask them to. And so that concept of being a charismatic leader, that's what I'm gonna talk about today and give you some tools and tips on how to be that person. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. Let's see. Oops, got to go up there. Okay. So in neurolinguistic programming, 
this is called the charisma pattern. And there are three aspects to this. It's the visual, the auditory, and the kinesthetic. And I'm going to go over each one. And all of us human beings, we have all three of these tendencies, right? As long as we can see, right? There's some folks that are visually challenged or auditorily challenged or physically challenged, but we all to some extent have parts of this. So you have to speak to the visual, to the auditory and to the kinesthetic of your audience. So go to the next one. So visual, how to speak, how to capture the, the folks that are more visually oriented. So for visual, you want to speak faster. You want to speak faster. You want to use images, colors, light, dark. You want to use words that bring up an image. For example, it was a very dark night. I was walking down the street and suddenly I had this image in my mind of a huge audience and I could see it, I could feel it as if I was in front of that audience and there were thousands of them out there. I could see their faces, I could see their smiles and then I could hear the roar of their clapping. So for example, next is the auditory. You want to, with the auditory, you wanna have them hear the sound through your voice. Like when I started my first story about when I was a little kid, right? I used the voice of my teacher who said, hello, Sarah, good morning. You see how I changed my voice. So when you use the auditory piece, you wanna go a little less fast and you wanna use words that describe the sounds. So it could be ringing. So if you're telling a story on your video about, um, you know, and suddenly I heard bells in my head, ding, 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 ding. You can actually say the sound. And that's how you will capture the, the po folks that are more auditorily inclined. So for I'll just the visuals, you wanna create pictures. For the auditories, you wanna have the sounds and actually make the sounds. And then for the kinesthetics, you want to talk slower. You want to use feeling language. So things like when you're telling a story, you want to use things like I was, I felt as if I, my feet were in cement. I was so slow. I couldn't move. I was stuck, right? You could even use that. That's often something that people use as far as when they're trying to reach the pain point of their audience is being stuck. So if you wanna reach a, you, the kinesthetics in your audience, you wanna use those images of the cement or the dragging. Oftentimes you'll also hear, are you spinning your wheels, right? That's a kinesthetic language. So the charisma pattern is using a variety of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. And you go back and forth from these three to make sure that you're engaging all of your audience. Because if you only talk slowly, like I used to tend to do because I'm very kinesthetic tendencies, <laughs> I would lose the people who were very visual. And so you wanna have a variety, not only of the words you use, using visual words, auditory words and kinesthetic, but you also want to have a variety of velocities of your voice. There are times you, when you want to speak faster because those are the visual people. They're going to be like, oh, they're going to be right with you. They would get bored if you spoke slowly the whole time. And yet, if you only speak fast, then the kinesthetics will be lost. They will lose their interest very quickly and they will just go on to the next video. So the, the real- Are you ready for the first few questions? All right, perfect. Okay, what does kinesthetic mean? Oh, kinesthetic is the body, is a feeling. So kinesthetics is, um, you know, your, what is connected to your body. So what you feel in your body. So that's like the feeling of um, slowly walking, right? Or um, dragging your feet. That would be a kinesthetic language because it's about the feeling in your body. Hopefully that 
that um, that answers your question. Okay. Is it better to be yourself on camera versus a performance? And what's the difference? Oh, great question. I love it. So here's, <laughs> this is a hard question to answer, but it's such a good question. So yes, you're absolutely not performing in that you're not acting. Okay, so there's a difference. There's acting is when you are pretending to be someone else. And yet performing in itself doesn't mean you're acting. Performing means you are being yourself in your full authenticity, but you can be performing in the sense that you are sharing your passion, your skills, whatever it is. For example, when I was a professional singer, I was performing, but I was singing from my authentic heart. And that's why I was you know, successful because people could feel my heart. I was being completely authentic. So, uh, so we need to make that distinction between acting and performing. So great question. And uh, do you know how many video touches we need for a consumer to start trusting a person or brand? Mm. You know, usually they say seven. I don't have the research behind that, but I know there has been a lot of research and that is the number that most, uh, I have heard the most. But I do think that it doesn't even take that much. If you can be authentic and show up powerfully and bring in that variety that keeps people interested, I, it could be less than seven, in my opinion. It's gonna, because really what I'm talking about is establishing trust when people can relate to you and feel mirrored by you when they hear something that relates to them and they feel connected, I think that trust is going to really be established very quickly. That's my opinion. Okay. Uh, these patterns are a good idea when we have defined audience, but what if we are running videos to an unknown audience to generate leads? Oh, ex oh yes. No, absolutely. You should use this even more so because you don't know what the audience is out there. So you wanna make sure that you're reaching everybody because you're going, to you're going to get groups of people from all three of these. This is just across the board, yeah. Is it better to be casual or more professional in the videos to engage with your clients? So this is a good question too, y'all are awesome. This really depends on who your audience is. And it depends on your business. And that's one of the things I teach in my course. So I have some templates in the course that I use. And one is the signature video template and the profitable video template. And so those are so specific to your business. So if you have corporate clients that you're trying to reach, you would want to be more businesslike. If your audience is the stay-at-home moms, then uh, you don't need to do that type of professionalism, you know, dress up. And that's really what I talk about a lot in the courses. It's so unique and individual to you. And that's the fun thing. I want you all to be inspired because you video is a creative art. It's, it's an expression of who you are. And you also need to take into consideration who you're reaching. So, you know, think about that when you make those decisions, even your background. Your background is another thing, not only how you dress, but also what's your background. Like for me, I want to create a safe, a place where people feel safe, right? Like a, a container when I work with my clients. So this is my virtual office and this is where I make my videos because this is where you're gonna find me and I want you to feel safe. I want you to feel contained. And so that um, is another piece. I know I went beyond the question, but all of these things are things you need to think about when you make the decision. Don't spend too much time. I encourage you all just jump in on video because the, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And also you want it to just jump in so you can take a look at them and, and then make the final decision of how you want to ultimately present yourself to the Zoomiverse and to the universe, the online universe. Uh, it's one of the reasons why in the course I have a private Facebook group so that you can practice those things and take a look and not just have yourself trying to decide whether you like it or not, because we tend to be our worst critics, especially on videos. So it's nice to have other feedback. 
Great. We, we have more questions, but I think it's best to let you get on with some content. I would like to make one observation. Uh, participants, take a look at Sarah's mouth as she talks, and you will see hyperactivity going on. Take a little mental snapshot of that hyperactivity, and when it comes time for us to talk to each other, compare Sarah's level of hyperactivity of her of her of her of her lips moving with the normal, and you'll see a dramatic difference. Back to you, Sarah. Take it away. Okay. Thank you. Now, now you're super conscious about your mouth <laughs> going like crazy. I took that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant as a compliment. It's how people Absolutely. articulate. I want to say it also has to do with uh, being a singer and enunciating and talking, right? That's, I, I got that was what your tip is all about. So, okay, so charismatic leaders, I spoke a little bit about that. And I'm encouraging you each and every one of you to become that empowered leader you need to do and, and develop that charisma. So charisma is a, a skill, right, of persuasiveness and charm to influence others. And we want to influence others in a positive way, influence them to know that, that there is an answer to whatever problem they may have, because we all are problem solvers, entrepreneurs. And so that persuasiveness and that influence is really for the, the common good, right? When we have something that we are offering to the world that they need. <sighs> and so that's where that charisma really, really helps and the charisma pattern that I just taught. And you want them to feel like you're talking to them, that you know them, their pain, their challenge, their dreams. And this is all about marketing. I'm sure all of you are business owners, so you know you have to know those things. And what I encourage you by using the charisma pattern that I just taught, as you speak about their pain and about the solutions that you offer, really speak to them to their heart and with your own passion because back to that question about authenticity the more authentic and passionate you are about your ability to help them and solve that pain and that problem the more likely they will be to feel safe with you to trust you and to follow you okay so we're going to get to the next piece about gestures and how to use um, your hands this is some powerful techniques here. So I'm sure you have seen this, all of you have seen this on commercials and things when people point. Now there's a reason for that. And pointing can be very rude in some cultures. And so what I recommend is using your whole hand, but it's an authoritative stance. So when you have something that you're saying that you really want your audience to take home and you want them to follow you, you use your hands in this way. Or you can point also, um, but like I said, sometimes pointing can be you know, rude in some cultures, but it's okay to use. It depends again on what it is you're trying to stress, but you, when you want them to know exactly what to do, you can use your hands like this and you want to do it in synchronicity with your uh, voice right so that's a powerful way to get your point across yes so that's a good one um so trust and safety and i know on this small screen um but what you want to do and i know you've seen this as well right when people get on stage they raise their arms up and they open their arms. And so that is another gesture that is very important for that trust building that we were talking about earlier. So you want to build trust. And there are times when you're when you want to say something and you open your arms, it's hard around a little box. But if you were to move back, for example, in your video, and if you wanted to, for example, do something creative, like start back and open your arms and invite them and then move forwards where you get closer. You could do something like that. It is harder, but that, but just know in general, whenever you're doing a speech or on videos in this case, that you can use that gesture to welcome people and make them feel safe and trust you. 
and then the palms open. This is this is where you're requesting something. So it, it, we can all also um, often have an ask, at, and this is a good one to use when you're asking for something. And all of these gestures speak to the unconscious. These are also part of my um, NLP training, and it speaks to the unconscious. So you can use these. For example, um, it's an ask. I really want you all to get the benefit from this incredible program, right? So when you have your hands up like this, and I've got, um, it's, you know, again, if I was a little farther back, there we go, something like this. So you might want to use the hands, your hands up when you're asking them. Um, I'd love you to join me. And for this free video, you will get so much benefit out of it. So you see how I'm I'm inviting them and it elicits um, trust as well because the palms are open, but it also puts, what this position does, it's like a, a, a one down. Whereas this one where you're pointing and you're going, this is more authoritative, it's a one up, I'm telling you what to do. This one is, I'm asking you and you're inviting them to be the one up from you, which there are times when you want them, you want them to feel empowered, right? Because especially when you're asking them to join your group or whatever it is that you're asking, people will be turned off. If like, you better join my group, right? Nobody's going to do that. And so you ask them in a good way. And so, uh, you know, and, and, and explaining the benefit of the program, and that's a nice way to just give them the power, right? And you say, you know, if it's not for you, it's okay. That would be another great place to put this. You can give your offer and say, you know what? It may not be for you and that's okay. Right, it's like giving your audience the power because you want them to ultimately make the choice, and you don't want, you know, right? This, none of us are in the business of trying to get people to, to, to sign up for our programs if it's not in their best interest. So all of these are great ways to to bring that point home and to establish trust. Also, that in this case, to know that you know what you're talking about, you are trustworthy, and you're also understanding and giving them the ultimate choice might be a good place for um that would be a good place for questions even though the some youtubers like gary vanyarchuk likes to use profanity does this attract or detract from one's audience or is this just a fully self-expression of who a person is mm, wow good question y'all i think that it depends on your audience that's what I would say. Yes, it could be an expression of your personality. And if that is your personality, uh, then yeah, you wanna go with authenticity, but you do have to think about your audience and, and who it is um, you know, that is gonna be hearing this and whether they, if you, know, if, if you want them to, to be okay with that. So it's important to be authentic, but I, I personally would, would think, you know, you have to really think about it. Or try it out and see what kind of response you get. <laughs> that would be my other suggestion. And are there any good people on Fiverr for videos? And if you don't understand the question, we can ask Jean to unmute and clarify, but maybe you do. Yes, absolutely. I've seen some incredible um, videos done on Fiverr. So I, I highly recommend that. It's a nice, low price way like if if you have yeah i yeah i guess the answer is yes we'll go in too much into it but absolutely you can have them you know um put something together for you that you already videotaped or you could have you could just tell them what you want give them the content and they can make it for you question from heather i did videos and have a youtube channel but now i have to get them out and seen and people engaged how do i do that mm. Yes, that is the art of managing social media. And I think that there's a lot of sh uh, sharing. This isn't my forte, actually, social media and how to get it out there. In my course, I actually collaborate with uh, some social media experts because that's their forte. And that's why I invite them into the course to give those types of, of 
you know, um, what's the word, secrets, tips, and tricks. But what I do know is that you have to post consistently. And you also need to do things like know the tricks and tips of, of sharing and liking and sending things out there. And, and you know, you've got to know how to work social media for sure. But I do believe as far as videos go, you need to repurpose them meaning don't just do a YouTube channel. You've, if you do a YouTube video, post it on Instagram, you know, on in, uh, IGTV if it's longer, on, face, on your Facebook pages, uh, on, you know, that would be probably the best tip I could give you around that. If you've got a YouTube channel, repurpose them for all of the other social medias because that will drive traffic to your YouTube channel. It's, uh, it's more of a statement, but maybe there's a question embedded. It's from Aro. I tried recording some videos and presenting my business myself, but recently I turned to Fiverr to hire a spokesperson to introduce my business on my behalf. And I will have another one to send videos to invite real estate agents to meet with. Maybe the implied question is, under what circumstances would I be my own spokesperson and hire somebody else to be my spokesperson for the purpose of producing great video. Yeah, and I guess the yeah it would be personal preference really, because there could be some folks out there that really don't want to be putting their face out there, and that's okay too. In which case, I would say get a spokesperson. Um, but you know, it depends on your business really. You know, I think if it's a business where uh, of coaching or something like my business, you they're going to want to know you. Whereas I could see with perhaps other businesses, it, it might be advantageous. Or like I said, personal preference to if you if it's not something you want to do, but you do need to do videos. Everybody does for marketing right now, one way or the other, for sure. And the last question in this sec round. I love your background, Sarah. When I started shooting videos, I feel like I'm not sounding like me. How can I overcome this and present myself more confidently? Mm. Yes, yes. This is something I cover in the course as well. So there are NLP techniques that you can use to shift your emotional state. Uh, and because there, it, it's complicated and I don't want to get into too much because I do want to make sure we get through all the, the, the content. But what I'd say is number one, practice. And number two, learn to do some, you know, exercise before you press that record button to get your, to get your confidence up. I actually have a, the six steps from going from anxious to confident in five minutes or less. And I actually created that um, for folks like you who, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's not anxious necessarily, but you can use these techniques to shift your emotional state to confident. So I will lead you all. If we have time, I could lead you all. In fact, if you want, I could do it right now. Let's just do it right now. Just to answer that question, if that's okay with you. So if everybody just sits for a moment and I want you to remember a time when you felt totally confident, completely and utterly confident, like a specific time. It could be, you know, at your, you know, after that you nailed that job interview, or it could be when you were a kid and you, you rode your bike for the first time, or, you know, you're getting on the bike and you just have that confidence that you know you can do it. And so, you know, just close your eyes for a minute and take yourself back to that time. See what you saw, feel what you felt, hear what you heard, see what you saw when you were totally and completely confident. And just let yourself be there and feel it. And just smile and feel that. Breathe the way you breathed when you were totally and completely confident. And then go ahead and open your eyes, come back to the room, come back to our course and just hold that confidence. And I recommend you do that right before you, you know, press record and get yourself in that confident state. The other thing that you can do, which helps a lot is 
say the, you know, whatever it is you're going to say in your video, you know, say it a few times. That's the other simple, simple hack. It depends on individually, like what's going on for you that you don't feel confident, but you can just like run through it a few times. And I actually recommend do both like run through it a couple times and then get yourself in a confident state and then press that record button. No further questions. Back to okay. you, Tara. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that exercise with us. Absolutely. That's, that's a value add. <laughs> so tone of voice. This is huge when it comes to creating videos, creating uh, trust, you know, creating followers, creating people that are going to want to click your, you know, whatever it is your call to action is. So the tone of your voice you know, it's something that you can practice, but you want to make sure that it's a tone that you want to, to, that will create a feeling in your audience. If you want them to be excited, then you might use this really excited tone where you can be, I can't, you know, you are just going to have so much fun at this course. Like I am so excited because I know that you are going to whatever it is, right? Like if you want them to feel excited, then you're going to have this excited tone. If you want them to feel calm and what you're actually offering is something that is going to help them feel calmer and more secure and confident, then you want to use a tone of voice that will elicit that feeling in them. So the tone is something that you can work on. And again, as I said, with all of the decisions on your video, think about your audience. What do you want them to feel? What do you want them to experience from you. Because as um, Roger talks about in his, in his um, speaking training, if you can make your audience feel something, they will take action. They will follow you, they will click your action. So that's where the tone of voice can be a huge bonus to helping them feel whatever it is you want them to feel. Intonation is another huge one. I'm sure this also cross over with, with Roger's expertise, but meaning you want fluctuation of your voice. You wanna go up, you wanna go down. Um, there are some tips I'm gonna teach you in a moment. Um, uh, and then, um, oh, this is the one, ending the phrases. So not only throughout your, um, throughout your video, you want to have times when you're going up, when you're going down, so that your voice sounds interesting. Because if you do not change and fluctuate your voice, it can become boring very quickly. So I'm just using the same tone there. And it, you know, there may be times when you want to do that, but more often than not, you want to have a variety of tone, you want to go up and down and all around. Now the ending phrases using that is this is a really great hack y'all. And that is so when you want them, so when you want them um, to stay interested, you want the tone to go up. So whenever you end a sentence, you want the tone to go up. And it takes a little practice, but I highly recommend trying it. So in other words, whenever you end a sentence, you end it going up. And this is something, it's just a little hack for you all to keep your audience interested. Now, going, staying the same is when you wanna make a point and you're just wanting to make a point and have them listen and it's more like a, um, I need you to know this. It's just like straight, this is a point I'm making. And when you want to tell them to do something and become that more authoritative, right? To go along with this, that's where you do the tone down. So you say, I know you need this. You can even combine the authoritative gesture with the tone going down to bring it home. So that's when you're trying to tell them to do something. You need this, this. now. You I need the this. tone going down. All right. All right, I'll teach us one other point here and then we will um, maybe take questions if there are any. So this is a really important piece. N not only do you need to get that confidence when you press that record button, 
but you also want to have your energy up because as if you talk to anybody who's done tv and is on tv uh, they always talk about how you have to actually express yourself even more in order to, for them to you know, show up and be interested in what you're saying. And it's the same on video. So if you want to keep their interest, if you want people to stay watching till the end when you have your call to action, you've got to energetically be up. And that's where any kind of exercise, like the one that I taught, or even just, you know, doing some calisthenics before you get on or you know if you do yoga do a handstand right before you go on get your energy up you can use whatever exercise you need i know i have studied ancient taoist inner inner healing practices so there's a way to cultivate your energy and access your energy and make it bigger but whatever you can do whatever you need to do yourself to get your energy up before you press that record button, you need to do it because you've got to show up stronger than you normally would. Because remember, you don't have an audience there to feed you the energy. Like if you're on stage, on a real stage with 100 people in front of you, right, you're going to feel energy. You're going to be energized just by the by the intensity, right, of, of all that energy and that you're going on stage. Whereas to get that type of energy when there's no one in the room and you've just got a video in front of you and you've got to click that record button, you've got to somehow ignite yourself. So whatever that is for you, I encourage you to do it. I can't stress it enough. And of course I go over more of these types of exercises in the course, but any questions about, any questions popping up, Roger? Uh, as usual, lots of questions. Uh, what's the standard length of a video to keep your audience engaged? Okay. You know, I would say uh, for social media, like for the social media, really one minute, 30 seconds to a minute, you can get so much in there uh, in that time. If you really you know, know what you want to say and keep them engaged um, for, you know, kind of like any kind of call to action is part of my profitable video template. You want to have these pieces in there. Otherwise, you're going there, they're, you're going to lose them. So you want to make it short, sweet, energetic, get their pain points in there, get, get why you, why you should be the person to solve their problem, and then what the results they're going to get and what the call to action is. Those are the elements of profitable video and that's really all you need. And I recommend for those types of videos for ads or social media posts, short, sweet, and powerful. Now, YouTube is different because people go to YouTube, which it is social media also, but I meant more of like, you know, the, the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but YouTube is unique because people often go there specifically to learn something. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing a longer video to put on YouTube that if you're going to teach an important thing that you want your audience to learn and then be more interested in what you do. For example, teach a five to 10 minute um, you know, piece of a course, for example. But if you're going to do that, it's a whole other art of keeping them engaged because your question was how to keep them engaged. So if you're going to do the longer videos, you've got to have visuals in, inside of the video, not just you talking for, you know, 10 minutes. So my answer to that one is it, it could be either, but if you are going to do longer, you're going to have to have more visuals. You're going to have to have more music and, and shifts. In the same way that I was talking about the changes in the ton, uh, tonality and the changes in the velocity of your voice, if you're going to do a longer video, you also have to have those types of visual changes. Okay, we got uh, four more questions, Sarah. So I encourage you to keep your answers short and sweet. Uh, <laughs> what's the difference between tone of voice and intonation? Ah, ah boy, that's a tough one to answer. Uh, very short. Um, so the intonation when I was talking about was more ups and downs, right? So intonation is the, your fluctuation um, in the to in tone is really like a pitch right in music where you're going up and you're down so it is like intonation going up and down 
Whereas the tone of your voice is more the quality of your voice, the way I was using it. Hopefully that, that answers. Uh, here's the context to Riaz's question. Riaz is not, English is not Riaz's first language. His question is, I cannot remember fluently everything I have to say in say a 10 minute video. If I use a script, it shows clearly that I'm using one. What's your advice to overcome this challenge? Teleprompters. If you haven't you tried a teleprompter, they're great for longer, longer videos. Or in your case, if if you know you, you want that support with the English, because what you can do uh, with teleprompters is they come up right. Um, check it out. They have a couple apps um, just to make it short and sweet. But basically, the words go right by the camera so you can be looking at the camera you're not looking at a script but the words are there to help you i think that would be huge for you a teleprompter can come in a voice activated variety so the faster you talk the faster the, the words scroll from jean uh, i do write blogs for my business in the financial services industry do you advise me to create short small videos from the blogs to post on social media absolutely because it would drive, they could drive you to the blogs, right? Get more people going there. Uh, I feel scripted content, capital S, capital C, doesn't present authenticity or passion. I want to speak more from my experience. What are your thoughts, Sarah? I guess it depends on what your, what your platform is. I think that unscripted is great. It, and I've done that before. And it can be very powerful. And uh, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. It just depends on what your platform is. What I mean by that is that if you're doing Facebook Lives, for example, where you're just wanting to show up consistently, I think that would be a great place to, to just pour out your heart and you know talk about what you're passionate about, unscripted. I think there's definitely a place for that. I think you could also put if you were doing a longer, uh, you know, YouTube video, there could be a place where you do those kinds of recordings and then take the best of that and, and plug it into a video, a longer video. That's another idea. I think there's absolutely a place for it. And I think that the, but I want to say that the passion, even in a scripted video, comes from all of these techniques that I'm telling you. You, you know, feel the passion, feel, feel what it is the benefit that your audience is gonna get. Know your why, why you're doing this. Because even in a scripted video, when you wanna make sure that you're you know, getting those pieces that I talked about, like the elements of a profitable video, you can become incredibly passionate about that when you think about what is the benefit they're going to get. So it's hopefully, that was a long answer, but. The final question thus far is from Heather. How do you get your energy up and remain calm? Ah, good, good. So I would say, yeah, so, so remaining calm, meaning you're not anxious, but your energy's up. So that's where the, the exercise is like the confidence exercise, you know, get your energy up and then do a confidence exercise where you're confident and you're, you're, that means like, if you're more confident, you're more calm, right? You know what you're doing. Or if you needed to be calm and you tend to be more on the anxious type and it's like, so you're not going to get yourself all ramped up because you tend to go more anxious. Then when you use that same exercise I taught, but think of a time when you were totally and completely calm. And so what if what you're going for is calm, you can use that same exercise. You can use it for any state you want. In fact, that's what I have on this, this slide here, right? Use the power of your unconscious mind to to shift your emotional state anytime. Shift it to whatever emotional state you want. You can use that same Heather, Heather is saying, no, I meant choosing calm tone for my purpose. Okay. Services for calming. Heather, you, is, if this isn't clear, I'll ask Heather to unmute and explain. I think I got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. She got it. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. And so, it's, yeah, it's, it seems counter, but you want to speak calmly, like I am right now, like I'm energized right now, but I'm speaking calmly. So I think it really takes a little practice. And if, if what you need is you want that calm, 
um, kind of security that you want them to feel, then you can do that. You just have to keep yourself energetically up, but it does seem counter, but I hope I'm demonstrating it because my energy is up, but I'm calm and I'm using my voice, right? A calm tone of voice. So was that the, did that answer, Heather? Let's assume yes. Sandy yes, wants to yes, know. yes, thank you. Okay. Sandy wants to know how to become good at making live videos. And I don't think we have time for the answer to that question. You should come and join my course. <laughs> That's what there, I did there you go. Now let's <laughs> move on with your content. All right, let's go on. Okay. Um, so here are some of the things I've talked about, um, just about energy, about um, you know, accessing the energetic power of your emotions to move your business forward. And, you know, this is just some, some verb verbiage here to really bring home what I've taught you, right? That it's all about emotion, elicit emo your own emotional state so that you can use that to elicit the emotions of your audience. Um, yeah, this is kind of a recap. So you use the power of your unconscious mind. When I say the unconscious mind, what I mean is I'm saying use that visualization, right? Use the images that your unconscious mind speaks in images. So you can use the power of the images. If you have trouble sometimes, uh, you know, feeling comfortable on camera, you can think in your mind having a whole room of people who love you behind the camera so that you can that's a way to use the power of your unconscious mind, that image of the people that I love on the other side of the camera so that I smile, so that I feel good when I'm getting on camera. Um, oh, there we go. I just had that same thing, right? Imagine the audience that loves you and makes you smile. So, so this is a really great tip and you can use it for your own emotional state, but you can also use your unconscious to, to help you feel comfortable, to help you be that, whether it's calm, whether it's excited, whatever it is, that state you wanna be in. Your unconscious mind is a incredible force that we all have access to if we know how to use it. And imagery, uh, visualization is, is the key to, to accessing it. And then never underestimate the power of a smile. So just remember that when people are watching you, if you feel good and you are smiling, you're going to help them feel good. So it's a very easy tip, you know, to make people feel welcome. Along with this, you know, you're going to be smiling because you want people to say, hey, I'm here for you. I feel good. I want you to feel good. And nowadays we sure need that, right? <laughs> we all need to feel good. And as we're in these, in the Zoomiverse all by yourself. <laughs> so, and here's my little smiley dog. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> underestimate the power of a smile. Anything you can use, any images or stories. You know, I know that um, Roger talks a lot about stories as well, but I, I in the course, I also um, do a whole section on story, the use of story, but you wanna make people uh, smile and feel good. So if you would like to get in touch with me, I'd be happy to do a discovery call, a connection call, I like to call them connection call because I love connecting with people. I love sharing my gifts and learning about you. So you can go to sarahbasan.com and book a connection call. Yeah, I've got my calendar link on there. So feel free to reach out to me in that way. And I look forward to seeing you all shine on video. Sarah, that was uh, uh, just wonderful content, short, sweet, to the point, and delivered with uh, energy, vitality, and, and all the things that you modeled that you taught. So VBN and the whole EIN family of meetups thanks you amazingly for what you have mm. shared with us. I'm going to stop the recording now, but uh, participants, don't go away. We have a nice surprise coming up for you. Hang on one second.